brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, our delightful star of stage and television, soon to open on Broadway in a new play, once more with feeling, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman that took 80 days to go around the world, and all of us would have been very pleased if he'd taken 160 days. But he is soon to appear in what I understand is a marvelous movie, Separate Tables, the dear Mr. David Niven. Well, um, some people wonder why I crop up from time to time on this panel. <laughs> and I don't blame them for wondering, because so far I've accomplished nothing except to demonstrate in front of some 40 million people that I'm a bird brain. <laughs> The real reason is that I do enjoy an occasional Sunday evening flanked on either side by beautiful and intelligent women. And now it is my great pleasure to present my beautiful and intelligent left flank, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. First time I've ever been called that. Thank you. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to introduce our panelist, who I don't believe is running for office, but you'd think so, because he's about to embark on a lecture tour, making seven speeches in five days in the Middle West, starting tonight, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Hello, that's Frank. <laughs> well, when I was a boy, many, many years ago, uh, the Schubert's used to bring Viennese operettas over here by the boatload. And after the opening chorus, some chorus girl would always herald the first appearance of the male baritone by saying, oh, here comes that dashing Prince Hockenstruffel now. <laughs> and here's our dashing young Prince Hockenstruffel, John Hockenstruffel <laughs> Daly. <laughs> it was nice to be here. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to What's My Line. It's nice to have Mr. Niven back with us again, because our plan tonight is to make the panel suffer, in spite of lecture tours and successful plays. This half hour is going to be difficult for all of them. We will also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Oh, panel, I forgot to tell you something. I forgot to tell you, you don't have to blindfold for the first one tonight, but let's see what you can do with the first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Jack? Odell, is that right? <laughs> Mr. Odell, where are you from? Newport News, Virginia. Newport News, Virginia. Fine, Mr. Odell, meet the panel. Panel, Mr. Odell, will you join me over here now, please? And do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine. If you know how we keep score, let's let the folks at home and those who come and joined us in the audience tonight know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, the usual bit of help. We'll tell you that Mr. Odell is salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with... Miss Arlene Francis. Mr. O'Dell from Newport News. Is it possible that you work for a non-profit making organization? Uh, it's not possible. It's not possible? Just a minute. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, come now, you know if it's profit or non-profit. Well, no, we were talking about the fishing down oh, there. Oh, that? Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, that will give you a no. All right. <laughs> One down and nine to go. It is a profit-making profit organization. Mr. Niven? Uh, is there any um, service involved in this, then? Yes, there is. That you perform? That's correct. Is this a service that I would enjoy? <laughs> uh, I doubt it. 
Now, I think if it were necessary <laughs> to uh, practice the service on you, you probably wouldn't enjoy it. That makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, then, uh, Mr. O'Dell, may I assume that none of us on the panel would particularly care to take advantage of your services unless it were absolutely necessary? Oh, my. <laughs> I would say under certain circumstances and taking uh, no particular account of the present moment in time, that it is likely that uh, given a certain set of circumstances, you might be the happy recipient of the services which Mr. Oh. <laughs> O'Dell purveys, so we'll give you a no. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. O'Dell, I wonder if this confusion of a profit making or not could be that Although you yourself are in a profit-making business, you have something to do with the United States Navy. Do you serve the United States Navy in any way, shape, or form? No, sir, I do not. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Mr. O'Dell, if one had to make a choice between whether you work on the land or the sea or the air, uh, uh, could I make a choice of perhaps the sea? You want to make a choice on the seat. Because you want to give me a note, John. That's <laughs> exactly right. Five down and five to go, Mr. Niffin. If I had had the same training that you've had, could I perform this service? Yes, you could. Would I enjoy it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I would enjoy it. I believe you would very much. I could really throw myself into the heart and soul and... Heart and soul. <laughs> Are there any animals connected with this? <laughs> no. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are there any women connected with your work? Yes. You know what David enjoys, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do something that women enjoy. Receiving. Well, let's put it this <laughs> way. If Mr. O'Dell performs his services efficiently, the uh, uh, women uh, who might be beneficiaries thereof, it is reasonable to presume under most circumstances would be happy that he was performing these services. Thank you. Mr. O'Dell, do you perform your services at any time indoors? Yes. Can you do whatever it is you do in the daytime or the nighttime? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Well, now we have got down to a point where we'll have to find out whether you do them in the daytime or the nighttime. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take the first guess. Do you do your services in the daytime? No. Eight down and two to go. The only people I know that work at night are, let's see, my husband <laughs> and night watchmen. Oh. Is there something you watch at night, Mr. O'Dell? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's correct. Uh, would the less knowing of us just call you ordinarily a night watchman as opposed to other things that you really have as a job? Yes, I'm afraid so, Mr. Adele. I'm afraid we have to agree that you're a night watchman. There is some fun attached to the fact that Mr. Odell I does I think what anybody that works at night has fun, John. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have a conference? Yes, you can have a conference. Do you think perhaps he, he's a night watchman at a girls' school? Or That's like right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O'Dell is night watchman at St. Catherine's School in Richmond. And, uh, How are you, you doing? Can, as you can see, uh, <laughs> David, you'd like this work, oh, wouldn't yes. you? Oh, <laughs> yes. He, he looks, he looks very, very, very fit on it, I think. Now, I don't know whether there's any connection, but uh, in the daytime, Mr. O'Dell, or Jack, is equally busy. He attends the University of Richmond Law School. Maybe this is necessary if you're a night watchman at a girls' school. <laughs> That's maybe it. Well, we nearly stuck them all the way, and yeah. thanks very much, Jack. I hope Thank you enjoyed you. your visit today. <laughs> Nice going panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Carol? 
Carol Long. All right? All righty. Mr. Long, where do you come from? Salisbury, Maryland. Salisbury, Maryland. Yes, sir. Where is that with relation That's to Baltimore? That's the uh, hub of the Eastern Shore. The hub of the Eastern Shore. miles east of Baltimore. Oh, Maryland. Maryland. Famous country, the Eastern Shore Sorry. of Maryland. Long, the panel. panel Long, will you, will you join me over here, please, sir? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Long? Yes, sir. Fine, then we'll let the audience here and the people at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. We'll tell you that Mr. Long is salaried, and let's begin with old self-declared bird brain there, Mr. Niven. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the inevitable question, is there a service connected with this? Yes, there is. Uh, is there any product connected with it? Yes, there is. Pretty good tonight, aren't it? Awfully good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this a product that I would enjoy having around my house? I think so very much, yes. Is it um, a product of, uh, known all over the world? An international... Yes. Would it be found... I can't go on much longer. Much. Would it be found... <laughs> would it be found in Russia? Yes. In Russia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw a man try so hard to get a no and be confounded in the process. This is bigger than all of us, this thing, isn't it? Um, would it be found in red China? Yes. <laughs> Are you a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> uh, is it something I could carry around? Yes, sir. Could I carry it in my hat? Yes. <laughs> I can? Yes, you could carry it in your hat. Is it something that's on me now? <laughs> One down and nine to go. <laughs> what? Miss Gilgallon. Is it, is it something that has ever been alive? Yes. Is it alive when it gets to you or when you get to it? Yes. Uh, is it alive? When David would have it in his house. Yes. Uh, it could be uh, yes or could no. Could be. Could be yes or no. Is what? it something that is to be found on land or in the sea rather than in the air? <laughs> is it something that could be found on land or in the sea rather than the air. You're excluding the air by this question? Well, I'm excluding, you know, above the ground, you know, like uh, zoom, like birds. Yeah, well, I guess we'd have to give that a yes. Huh? All right. mm. Yes. And this is not some form of bird life, in other words. Yes. Yes, it is not. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Yes, we'll have no. to give you a no. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. You mean by that that it is some form of bird life? Yes. But it doesn't get far off the ground. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, yes, I got that. Uh, is this a uh, bird that is uh, found along the shores of Chesapeake Bay around uh, Maryland, where you live? Very much so. Very. <laughs> yes. Sir. Now, if I only knew what birds are found along the shore of Maryland. Well, excuse me. There was no call no. for the conference, All please. Right, we'll That's call right. for one. Dorothy is uh, mentioning an edible fowl. Is it, uh, would this be an edible fowl that yes. you deal with? Uh, well, Dorothy said chickens, uh, so I'm going to take, I, I'm going to avoid this so she can have one comes around. No. Do, do, may, do these fowls make a funny noise, like a quack when they go walking around? No. They're not <laughs> quacking? That's three down seven to go, Miss Francis. That eliminates ducks, doesn't it? They fly in yes, the air. Ducks. Chickens don't fly in the air, do they? Not very far. much? Not no, very far. They can fly when they want to Is it a them. member of the fowl family? Yes, it is. What members are the dogs <laughs> <laughs> in the club? Uh, can you buy this at a, at a butcher's? Yes. Uh, would you buy it at special holidays? Anytime. Anytime. 
Well, if it was the turkey, it would be a special holiday, so no, that, that yeah, eliminates the turkey. Week. I know, but you're rich. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that we've had the menus, let's... Is it, is it closer to a chicken than an ostrich? Yes. yes. Is it in the chicken family? Yes. Is it a chicken? Yes. yes. <laughs> you that have something to do with the chicken? Have something to do with the chicken. Do you raise chickens? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Niven. Do you? Careful, David. <laughs> do you pluck chickens? No. <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. <gasps> well, do you do something other than selling them? No. Six down and four to go, oh, Mr. Sir. you sell them. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Bennett, you do get, get it. Mr. Longmore particularly is a chicken auctioneer. Oh. He runs at Salisbury. They have this daily chicken auction. At Selby. The chicken auction is at Selby, Delaware. Selbyville. Selbyville, Del How do you Delaware. you auction off a chicken? I'd like to hear the noise you make. Yeah, you, yeah would you? Yeah. I am 17, now, middle of one, middle of one, one, middle of two, two, middle of three, middle of four, middle of five, 17, six, middle of seven, and eight, and eight, and nine, and 18. I have 18, and <laughs> Then, the fellow who bought it goes up, and they hand him tobacco. Yes, you get it from American tobacco. <laughs> Well, we had loads of fun, and thank you very much. I might say that uh, we have an, a compatriot, Mr. Long, because he does a market report on television every day down in, in southeast, oh, really? in southern Salisbury. Maryland Shore. In Salisbury, he does the report. Thank, thank you very you, much, sir. sir. It was nice to have you as a guest. And now we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our alternate. I have a wonderful picture of David Niven walking around with a chicken in his hat. <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I asked my friends to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds on, panel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? No panel, in case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of when you ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and uh, we'll begin it all with uh, Mr. Bennett, sir. Well, that was the kind of hollering you usually hear up at the Yankee Stadium. I'm just wondering whether our mystery guests will have anything whatever to do with the World Series that opens on Wednesday. No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Have you been in the papers in the last two weeks in uh, New York City? Yes. Mr. Niven? Are you European? <laughs> no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you in something other than the entertainment business, primarily? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh... Are you performing in or about Metropolitan New York at the present time? Indubitably. Ms. Francis. Are you performing in the theater? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Niven. Are you performing on television? Apart from this minute, I mean. <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you tall, dark, and handsome? No. <laughs> I won't flip it. I think, uh, John, I, think our guest I... I think our guest comes within the, the description, tall, dark, and handsome. Mr. So, Sir. That's a yes. Not television and not the theater. Uh, there's a rodeo in New York now. Have you got anything to do with the rodeo? Yes. Well, I presume Bennett knows who... who uh, well, you meant Roy. The only one could be, if I may say, the only one I know would be Roy Rogers, Roy. if it's anybody else. Ah. <laughs> 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 
The Roy Rogers Rodeo opened last Thursday in Madison Square Garden, but it nearly worked, you know. We asked Roy to come and join us tonight because we figured your minds would be on the World Series and that you might yes. go wandering all afield. <laughs> and you did wander for a while, so that helps. And, uh, Roy, it's good to have you be back with us. He does perform on television, but his series is running on film, uh, David, so that's why we had to give you a no. He doesn't perform <laughs> personally on television right now. Is that right, sir? Just at the moment here. Just at the moment right here. <laughs> Well, Get that English accent from David Niven, huh? Yes, I, I was watching him backstage. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roy, as usual, I know you'll have big success with your radio, mostly because the youngsters will come from far and near to see you. Well, they we always a, do. We've been on a tour, uh, John, uh, the state fairs, and we certainly had a wonderful time meeting the kids all over the country. Uh -huh. And there were a lot of them down there today. I bet there were. Of yeah. course, it goes without saying that Mrs. Roy Rogers is Dale Evans and one of the... Wonderful things about this couple is they have seven youngsters, all but two of them adopted, and it's a great family. Congratulations. Well, nice to have you thank back you. with us. Can you say goodbye to the family? Thank you. And uh, so we'll have another contestant in just a moment. All right, now we have time for a final contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Larry? Sylvia, is that right? <laughs> we are a little short of time. Could you tell us where you're from? New York City. From New York City. Sylvia, the panel. Panel, Sylvia, will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine, then let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the audience know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, I put you on notice. You have very little time. We will tell you that Mrs. Silbert is salaried, and we'll begin general questioning with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Is there any product involved in what you do, Miss Silver? No, there isn't. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. I couldn't help thinking right after Roy Rogers, we should say, hi-ho, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miss, uh... Pittsburgh and Chicago, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Silver, uh, you perform a service of some kind. Yes, I do. Is it a service that can be, form be performed for both men and women? Yes. And is? Yes. Uh, do you come into actual contact with the men and women that, for whom you perform this service? No, I don't. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do they come to an office in order to acquire your services? No, they don't. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Niven. Do they talk to you on the telephone? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do they listen to you on the telephone? Uh, no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Shari, is that your first name, Miss Silver? Larry. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have anything to do with, uh, any kind of governmental work, like the United Nations or anything of that sort? Not at all. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. Seven down and three to go, <coughs> Mr. Niven. Could I avail myself of this service? You need it. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> well, I'm on the I right just, track, anyway. I was just kidding, David. I don't want to mislead you. <laughs> Much. Could, could I arrange that later on tonight? Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Nope. Well, yes, you could, really, but it takes... It's Mrs. Um, Silver, but it is a service which... Uh... Oh, my, I'm... No, it's a service which you could arrange, you could initiate, at least, uh, to receive later this evening. Dorothy has a hot one. I pass. Oh, well, it isn't really hot, David. Do you want me to put yes, it in? Yes, Well, I thought... Do you give any advice, Mrs. Silver? Yes, I do. Do you write the advice? Yes, Is I it do. advice to the lovelorn? Uh -huh. Yes! <laughs> Mrs. Silver writes a column for McFadden Publications, the title of which is I Need Advice, under the pen name of Jane Evans, which I think clarifies things. Thank you very much, Mr. Silver. Nice to have had you, and I'm sorry we didn't fool him. Another 20 seconds, we'd have done. Well, I must congratulate you, panel. You had a very good night this, tonight. And on that happy note, until next week, and with further and greater success with your play, as it is deserved, good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, dear John. Good night, David. Have a good trip back to California. Thank we'll you very you. much. Thank you. And good night, Dorothy. Good night, David. And you don't need any advice for the love, Lauren. Good night, Bennett. <laughs> good night, Dorothy. Good night, John.
Well, he doesn't know. But a man who comes in and says he's a bird brain and then performs this brilliantly <laughs> needs advice from somebody. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line? CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. Hal Sims, speaking.